Joel McCrea is the son of Thomas McRae, the CEO of LA Gas and Electric Company, and Louise Lou Whipple, who was born in South Pasadena, California. McCrea attended Hollywood High School before attending Pomona College. McCree's family subsequently donated 35 acres of his former farm to the newly built Candido Valley YMCA in Thousand Oaks, California, after his death. They also contributed 75 hectares to Joel McCree Wildlife Preserve's Canivo Casca Nature Reserve and 5 hectares to Camarillo's Boys and Girls Club. In Woodland Hills, California, an 84-year-old pneumonia patient was treated at the Motion Picture and Television Country House and Hospital. He appeared on stage and studied theater and public speaking while playing regularly at the Pasadena Playhouse in 1928. From 1927 through 1928, when he secured a contract with MGM, the diligent McCrea worked relentlessly as a bored man and bidder. In 1929, he played a big role in the Jazz Age and gained his first major role that year. In 1930, he traveled to RKO, where he made a name for himself as an attractive and versatile leading actor who could impersonate in both dramas and comedies. McCrea appeared in a disport march in the critically acclaimed film Bird of Paradise, 1932, directed by King Vidor and starring Dolores Del Rio. He had a paper line as a kid that delivered the Los Angeles Times to Cecil B. DeMille and other movie stars. He also had a chance to see D.W. Griffith's Intolerance of the Film and was a part of the Ruth Rowland-led series. McCrea would play a high school kid in the ERP film Wichita, in which he will also serve as a stunt double for Hollywood stars William S. Hart and Tom Mix. McCrea always had a fascination of horses and a deep understanding of them, and he went on to become one of the best writers in Western cinema. McCrea and William Gargan were pals on the Dartmouth football team in 1932 when they were photographed ripping towels apart in the locker room as the other players bathed. In 1932, he began working with Fay Ray in a very dangerous game that featured the characters Ray and Robert Armstrong and was shot at night while King Kong was shot during the day. In 1934, he made his film debut with two of his most famous girlfriends, Miriam Hopkins and The Richest Girl in the World, the first of their five films together and Barbara Stanwyck in The Gambling Lady, the first of 610 years later. It was meant for King Kong actor Jack Driscoll, but he turned down the part because he didn't want to play a printing press in the Jungle movies. Bruce Cabot was later cast in the role. In this film, trainees have the opportunity to earn money and perform in two big Western venues in 1937. Wells Fargo, 1937, Union Pacific, 1939, with his wife, Frances D. and Cecil B. DeMills. McCrea's first career came to a close in the early 1940s. In his interactions with mansions and homes, McCrea was just as wealthy as he was in his movie roles. It was the highlight of 1943 in Alfred Hitchcock's fascinating foreign novelist in 1940, a romantic comedy. Sullivan's Travels, 1941, and The Palm Beach, 1942 narrative, were directed by George Stevens with two comics by Preston Surges. 1946, he, on the other hand, refuses, claiming that the character is too large. McCrea's tall Veronica Lake had to stand on a box for snapshots while filming Sullivan's Travels since she was reputedly 16 inches shorter than McCrea and couldn't find both of their heads in the same way shooting. McCrea was cast in the lead part in The Postman Always Rings Twice despite his refusal to star in other films. He was also known for his acting abilities, and he claimed that he didn't feel qualified to play some roles. I disagree with his moral standards. Among the films he rejected were Spitfire, 1934, Years of Indulgence, 1944, Intruder in the Dust, 1949, and Will Rogers' Story, 1952. McCrea refused to develop military heroes during World War II. He believed he should have been paired with Spencer Tracy or Humphrey Bogart in the film. Catherine Hepburn is said to consider herself one of the best actresses he ever worked with. He also preferred to portray the roles he saw in it, regardless of whether or not he thought he was imitating them. McCrea also starred in one of William A. Wellman's westerns, The Great Moon Lady, which was released in 1942. McCrea was honored by the LA Film Critics Association with the Career Achievement Award, and he was inducted into the Western Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma the following year. 
McCrea has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6901 Hollywood Boulevard for his work in the motion picture industry, and another star at 6241 Hollywood Boulevard for his work in radio. He was born a few blocks away from McRae's house by default, but he went to Chicago as a child. Jody, Peter, and David were their three boys. Until McRae's death, they were married. Now it's 57 years later. They all sought happiness together over those years. Those were the years when their aspirations came true. When I write about Joel McCrea's passing, it makes me sad. True guilt in love is the feeling that one does not have enough time to invest all of one's confidence in it. He did everything he could to make his wife, Frances, happy. This love appears to be unique. It brought tears to my eyes. Sorry for the inconvenience. Joel McCrea did an outstanding job. Rest in peace, my friend. Pause for a moment. This duo will live on in our hearts forever. Also, in 1944, with Stanwyck and Buffalo Bill, actor Ed Edgar Buchanan, and young Maureen O'Hara, the Virginian was released in 1946 following the success of the picture. McCrea made his stage debut in the role of foreign writer number 10. It was in the early 1950s. Except for a hard film created by the British in 1953, McCrea's entire career was spent making westerns. McCrea is said to have reportedly quipped that he only imitated being able to farm. Later in 1955, he met Wyatt in a Hollywood town, while McCrea, a multimillionaire, had long toiled in the West on his farm in Ventura County, outside of Los Angeles. It was not only a return to what he had done before, but the kind he enjoyed, as he put it. McCrea's first radio series was Jace Pearson in the Western series of Ranger's Tales, 1955. In Wichita, he was a Wyatt Herb under the direction of Jacques Turner. In 1959, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association named the picture Best Picture Outdoor Drama. In the city of Wichita, McCrea and his son Jody starred in a short NBC TV series. He had previously declined to take the lead in Raha because he believed it would make the work more difficult. It was in the early 1960s. He sold the 1,200 and 490 hectares to an oil business on the condition that it does not explode near his house. On November 19, 1950, in an interview in 1978, McCrea met Western veteran Randolph Scott in writing the 1962 high school under the direction of San Peckinpah, which he did not make another feature film until The Rounders, 1966, many years passed before his next film, but in 1970, his son Jody and the Sioux Nation released the book Cry Blood Apache. In 1987, he was also awarded the Golden Buddha Award. McCrea married actress Frances D. in Brooklyn on October 20th, 1933, after meeting while recording a silver string in the film Mustang Country. For her role in the Union Pacific, she won the Golden Laurel Prize in 1951, a Photoplay Award in 1939, a Silver Medal in 1982, and a Trustee Award in 1976. McCrea last appeared in public on October 3, 1990 in Beverly Hills for a fundraiser for Republican candidate Pete Wilson. On October 20th, he died less than three weeks later.